This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You are very welcome to our service of Holy Communion in Christ Church Cathedral, Waterford. This morning, the preacher will be the Reverend Dr. Christine O'Dowd Smythe, and we are joined by organist and director of music, Simon Harden. If you wish to follow the service on the prayer book, we begin on page 201. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us, and write these, your laws, in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. In the wilderness, we find your grace. You love us with an everlasting love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. There is none but you to uphold our cause. Our sin cries out and our guilt is great. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Heal us, O Lord, and we shall be healed. Restore us, and we shall know your joy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Merciful God, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is found in the book of Exodus, in the 20th chapter, beginning at verse 1. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or what is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labour and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, your daughter, your male or female servant, your livestock are the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honour your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife 
or male or female slave, or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbour. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our appointed psalm today is Psalm number 19. You will find the psalm on page 611 of your prayer book, 611. And we will pray the psalm using alternate verse. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handwork. One day pours out its song to another and one night unfolds knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language and their voices are not heard. Yet their sound has gone out into all lands and their words to the ends of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun that comes forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber and rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of the heavens and runs to the very end again and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives life to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, dripping from the honeycomb. By them also is your servant taught, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often they offend? O oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent of great offence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen.
Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. John in the second chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove out all of them out of the temple, both the sheep the cat, and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May my words be in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I am here in Christchurch Cathedral, Waterford this absolutely beautiful cathedral. And I know that so many of you who come to worship here and have been coming perhaps since you were children or indeed have brought your own children and grandchildren here, you're thinking of it at this moment. I invite you for a moment to imagine looking at it through Jesus' eyes. If you came back after all our successive lockdowns, came back here to worship on a Sunday, and you pushed open the door of the cathedral and you saw sheep, goats, horses, tables everywhere with people making money, this din and smell, and nothing holy to be found, everything desecrated. One of your favourite sacred spaces defiled. How would you feel? Because it's funny, um, I have a student doing a piece of work for me at the moment, particularly on this gospel, and he said in his North American way, Jesus really lost it. So it's interesting when we think of Jesus doing something that we would expect of ourselves. Losing it. Literally seeing his father's house defiled and getting so upset that he overturns the tables and he throws out the coins and drives them from the temple. I'm sure there are people saying, but isn't anger a sin? And wasn't Jesus without sin? Well, first of all, having an emotion isn't a sin. It's what we do with it. I don't recall in this gospel that Jesus actually whipped anybody, but he certainly showed just how he stood on the Father and how he stood on what we owe to our Father God. We owe the very breath in our bodies. We owe everything we have to our Heavenly Father, the Creator, 
who created us, loves us, and waits for us. And what about Jesus, the Son of God, who took on the form of a servant in order to die for us so that we might have and enjoy our lives to the full and then eternal life when we die with him in heaven. I think nowadays we've lost perhaps a sense of gratitude, of thanking God, of waking up full of thankfulness that we have got to this day, that we have this day, that we have our lives. Because happiness, my dear friends, and joy is a choice. We can wake up and we can make a list of all the things that we haven't got. And believe me, there are times I'm sure you do that as I do. And then I remember all that I have and all that I hope and dream of doing and having before I die. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And if we do not have joy, we can ask for God to restore to us the joy of our salvation. But coming back to the gospel, we could look at it another way and see Jesus overturning all the obstacles, all the obstacles that people had put in the way of realizing that they were in God's house, that they were in God's presence. And so I must ask each one of you, what is Jesus overturning in your life? What are the obstacles between you and coming into the presence of your Father God, coming near to him and bringing him all that you have, bringing him all your troubles and cares. What is it that stops you? In this period of lockdown, many of us have seen our lives overturned in this past year. So we might ask ourselves, with all the calamity and all the distress and the loss, what can we see of this overturning that's of any good to us? And yet Jesus doesn't allow any of us, anything that happens to us is for our good because we believe as Christians that all things work for good to those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. So looking at things through fresh eyes then, I ask you that question again. What is Jesus overturning in your life? What are the obstacles that stop you from enjoying life to the full? the life that he came and died for you to have and enjoy. You might ask yourself this in the coming days and look to all the things that you can thank God for because the obstacles that he has overturned are for you to have a free road, a free way to love and peace and a new beginning. Amen. We proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we can come boldly before your throne of grace to ask for help in our time of need. Almighty God, creator of all things, we give you thanks today for the resources of our world, for the wonders and mysteries of the universe. Lord, help us to use wisely all that you have given to us, for the benefit of others, for the well-being of the earth, and to the glory of your holy name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father, we give you thanks for the beauty of our world. We give thanks for special holy places, and for this, our own church, Christ Church Cathedral, Waterford, and the home church of all of you watching today. Through them, may we learn awe and respect for your world. We ask you to guide all leaders of worship, to inspire all preachers of the word, to direct your faithful people in the ways of holiness and peace. Lord, your will be done on earth. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all legislators, for all those who set standards for us to live by. Guide all those who influence the minds of others, particularly the young. We pray also for the broadcasters, the press, for our political leaders. We pray for all dealing in world commerce or industry. Give to all the wisdom and will to use properly what you have given us. Lord, your will be done on earth. Lord, hear us. We give thanks for all those who have shared with us a sense of wonder, knowledge or mystery. We pray that we may learn to live simply and to be willing to help others to simply live. Lord, protect us, our homes and our loved ones. Be with all who have been made homeless, with young people who have recently left home, for those who are not at home but in hospital at this time. Lord, your will be done on earth. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who have become sidetracked, possessed by possessions, captive to greed and covetousness. We remember all who have suffered through the selfishness of others. Be a strength, O Lord, to all who have suffered violence and are suffering domestic violence in this time of lockdown. For all who have faced the illness our ill-treatment of a loved one. We pray for all who have lost their possessions, our livelihood. And we pray for all those who are ill at this time in mind, body and spirit. Those who are despairing. Those who cannot see an end to this lockdown. Lord, your will be done on earth. Lord, hear us. And we give thanks for all who have faithfully obeyed your will 
for all who have worshipped you in the beauty of holiness. We give thanks for those who founded this church. We pray for our loved ones departed. Grant that we may share with them one day in your heavenly kingdom. Almighty God, we bring before you these prayers and the prayers of all who pray silently and the prayers of all those who pray this day throughout the world. In the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And with you, Chris.
Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father Almighty and ever-living God at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, and by whose grace we are able to overcome all our temptations. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted, and in his holy gospel, commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks to you he gave it to them saying drink this all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit that we may be made one in your holy Church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. 
remember that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Lord our God, you feed us in this life with bread from heaven, the pledge and foreshadowing of future glory. 
grant that the working of this sacrament within us may bear fruit in our daily lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves and to take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.